all right ladies and gents uh, doing another video here on uh, ecu inputs tab um pretty relatively simple uh, may take a little bit of explaining to try and explain everything though uh, as far as what i'm doing um, i know i've been doing this for a while so uh, sometimes i have to remember to try and break it down for the guys who are new to this so bear with me for anybody that already knows what i'm talking about okay so but basically real quick i'll get into it i won't, I won't waste a bunch of time a lot of people are confused as far as the top section and the bottom section. This section right here, this is everything that the computer is going to see if you're going to try and log these parameters on your uh, computer on uh, on this screen right here. Okay, um, so that's what this section is for. This section right here is if you're wanting your ECU or your, the computer to be able to see it, to be able to know what it's looking at, this is where you put these in there. Okay. So, um, and this is for this section right here. This section right here, this is for the ECU input locks for factory code. Basically what we're saying here, let's say for example, intake temperature and barometric pressure. This is something that would be in a stock mass airflow sensor. But let's say if we get rid of that and we're going to speed density, we, we will no longer need these, okay? So we don't want the computer to be, keep looking for that. So basically we're going to, um, check that to ignore it okay let's say we have a rear o2 i mean uh, a wideband and we have it wired in the rear o2 input sensor um, and we don't want to look at for a stock rear o2 sensor we check that one as well okay so it'll stop looking for a stock rear o2 sensor okay um and of course i'm checking this because i will be going speed density myself uh, yes i love using a mass airflow sensor but i um, just decided to go with speed density because i have a, a map sensor already laying around anyway okay uh, if we don't want to use the uh, mdp sensor or basically the sensor for 2g guys that are sitting on top of the stock 2g manifold check that one as well okay I'm, i will no longer need those all right um as far as the pen assignments here i have a aem 3.5 bar map sensor and i'm being that i'm not using the barometric pressure sensor i have it wired up to um, that input for the ecu so that's where the ecu is going to be looking for this sensor is where this would normally be looking for it it would be the barometric pressure sensor okay so i'm telling the computer hey instead of looking for barometric pressure sensor which is built into the mass airflow sensor now we're going to look for this aem 3.5 bar map sensor under that input okay and we can basically do the drop down and we can look for whatever sensor we're using. If it's a uh, Omni 4 bar map sensor or whatever the case may be. If you want to use your own um, settings and voltages, you can use a user defined. Say if you get a sensor that's not in these, which are most common, but if you get something that's not in this drop down list, you can do user defined. Okay. But. Uh, I'm using this one, so that's what we're going with. And of course, the barrow, this is just basically where we're telling it to look for it, okay? So, uh, wideband here. This if we're um, if we're simulating uh, a narrow band, uh, basically we don't have the stock O2 sensor anymore. We're telling the wideband, uh, say, hey, we want you to not only uh, look for the air fuel ratio that you would normally do as a wideband, but we also want you to perform the stock O2 sensor functions because we've taken that out and we, and we need to be able to send that signal over to the ECU so it knows how much air and fuel um, to be or how much fuel to be delivering uh, based on how much airflow it's seeing okay so we're having it do dual functions so if we're no longer using the stock O2 sensor we're telling it let's say if we wired up to the rear O2 or whatever uh, input that would be we're going to drop down and that's where we're going to find it at okay i have mine wired to the rear o2 sensor input so that's what i'm using okay i'm also uh now as far as this is what we're looking at as far as the log um and we're telling it once again up here this is for the logging side of it for this particular input and these we can't change okay and we're going to have barrow coolant temp we can't change these but over here we can we can tell say barrow right here and we can drop it down and select what sensor we're using we'll have a whole bunch of different ones okay i'm going to leave that alone because i already have that where it's at now normally i have a innovate in this drop down box here 
but we're going to be discussing uh, AEM because everyone under God's green earth wants to use that piece of crap wideband. So, so for this instance, we're going to use the AEM. Okay, so we're going to scroll up here a little bit. We're going to go to look at some of the AEMs, and basically these are all the sensors we can look at that we're going to be looking as far as logging um, on our page while we're logging. Okay, but. The AM analog wideband gauge, that is the one wideband that I will say, and I've used it personally, is one that you can use and it'll match up perfectly. Okay. It, when I say it'll match up, it'll match up as far as what is on your log and the gauge itself. Because we want not only the gauge, um, whatever you see on the gauge is usually you can trust it, but you need to be able to have that same reading on ECM link. Okay. If the voltages are different, uh, when it's fed over to the ECU, it may not read the same as what's on your gauge, so you want those to match. <coughs> and therefore, if they don't, that's when you have to put in your own settings and uh, get them to match. Now, you can try selecting different ones, and basically all it's even doing anyways is adjusting voltage um, based on what setting you're using here. Okay, So you could play around with them if you want, but in this instance, what we would normally do, and I'm not going into the whole... Um, method of how to get it calibrated and stuff but what we're going to do for this instance we're going to select uh, linear wideband okay and then when we would do that normally we're going to hit save uh, pin assignments but being that I've already done it here we'll we'll change it to LC1 real quick and then we'll say uh, save pin assignments okay and we'll go over here and click OK and then that saves it okay now we want the ECU to be able to capture that value or to be able to say, hey, ECU, look at this uh, sensor here, okay? We want you to log it, okay? And that's when we're going to go over here. We're going to click Captured Values, okay? So we will go down here, and we're going to look for it in, in our uh, selection down here, okay? Now, I believe I have mine already down over here, I believe. Bear with me. But I believe I already have it in my selection, uh, what this is LC1. I may have it named wideband already, I believe. Yes, I do. Okay, so I have it here. All right, and then once that is done, we can go over to our log section here. And I believe I can click view. There's different ways to get around to be able to viewing these. Um, let's see. I'm going to say ECU, I believe. Captured values. We've got captured. But we want to read, and that's another way to get captured, okay, uh, basically to that same one. So if you see over here it says F10, that's another way. You can hit F10, you can click ECU and click on it right here, or you can click on the ECU puts, inputs tab and click Capture Values there, okay. So there's more than one way just to get to here, okay. But in the sense that it's here, we're needing to get to the displayed values. And when we say displayed values, basically... Everything down here is what's being displayed. This is what we're seeing, okay? We can log every sensor that's known to man that's in the EC, ECM link program. We can log every single one of them, but these are the displayed ones, okay? And this is what we want to see. In this instance, I can't find it right off hand, so I'm just going to do the shortcut, and I'm just going to select F9. You have this box up here. Okay, and we're going to go down here to, let's see, I believe I already have it. We will check and see. One, two, three, four. And bear with me. And I probably have it here. I'm just overlooking it. But anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to start the stream right here. Okay, there we go. There's my, my uh, parameter right there. Okay. And we can still hit F9 even while it's logging. Okay. So... Here, here it is over here. I'm sorry. I'm even looking at the wrong section. But here's my wideband right here. I already have it displayed. Okay. Um, one thing I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to try and... Well, I'm going to do it with my mouse here versus my hand. Because, yes, I have a touchscreen laptop. Okay. I'm double-clicking that parameter. That will bring up my box here. Now, we can go up here and rename this parameter. We'll discuss how to set all these up later. But... We can discuss it. I've got it. I mean, we can uh, rename these. I have it as wideband right now. Okay. At the moment, we're going to go back. We're going to change this to AM. Okay. Because that's basically what we're wanting. So we're going to say linear wideband. And this is the one that most people are going to be using. 
And I'm just going to show this real quick. I'm not going to go into in-depth detail on how to set up every single part of it. But we're going to select Save Pen Assignments. OK. OK. And then we should be good to go. And let's see. Saving to ECU. Now we're going to go back over here. I'm going to stop my log real quick. And I'm going to hit, uh, let me see. Real quick, we're going to hit ECU. We're going to do capture value to make sure that it is in there. And it should be a LEN wideband, I believe. Uh, let's see. Okay. Mine's already uh, in bold. Real quick. If they're not in bold, you want them in bold. The, basically, the ones that are in bold are the ones that the computer are is looking at. Okay. If it's not in bold, the computer's not even bothering looking at them. So, what do you do? You can basically, real quick, and just double click on them. It'll make it bold that says, Hey, the computer is looking at this sensor. Okay. Once we have that, we can click OK. And then we'll just click F9 real quick. We'll click OK again. Now, these are the available values to log. Okay. If we want to log them and put them down here, down at the bottom, all we do is just click on one or you can double click on them. You can either click on it like so and hit add to, to display and it'll move it over here, which brings it down here when we start our log. Uh, you can either click the value, click add to display, put it over here, or you can just simply double click it. Okay. Um, let me see. I may already have it to my log and we will see. Let me see. So I've got wide band. I think we had it as what? Lin wide band, I believe. We do need to get it on here and I do need to make sure it is here. Real quick, I'm going to just click OK. We're going to start stream okay there's my wideband right here len wideband now normally what this is if you see where it says 9.0 right here <clears throat> that is fairly rich and normally this value will not match the value on the gauge so this is what we're talking about let's see if i can double click it with my fingers but it's not working there so i'm going to use my mouse real quick i'm going to double click it and this right here is where we put in all the values okay and this is the difference between all the other uh sensors you can use because let's say just remember this we've got all the values here if we swap it over to another sensor which we're going to do real quick it will this section right here will go away it does not give you the option to select your voltages and your lambda that you want to put in there or minimum maximum and minimum volts and maximum volts okay it does not allow you to, to do that so what we're going to do real quick i'm going to stop my stream i'm just going to show you one more time because we're going to swap it back over to the LC1 where we had it at, which is actually what I use, which is much better, okay? Don't have to play around with trying to get it to calibrate and all. Okay, now as far as LC1 wideband, a lot of people don't realize. Uh, LC1, LC2, um, I believe LC2 uses the same one. Anything that's an Innovate gauge normally that I'm aware of, MTXL, if you have a DB blue, if you have a DB red, DB green, whatever. You're looking at LC1 wideband. Okay, so once again, we have to save pin assignments. If you do not select save pin assignments, the computer is not going to be looking at it. Okay, so we'll click OK again. We're going to look at our captured values. And I believe I already have it set up as wideband already. So it'll probably be down here. Yes, it is already in bold. Okay, so that is already done. We can go back to our log. And let's see, being that I have not taken it out of my displayed values, here is my parameter right here. And if you see, now we no longer see the LEN wideband, which is our AEM. When it's in gray, that means we're no longer looking at it, okay? So, we've just basically ditched our AEM and we put in our LC1, which is the one I have over here. And real quick, just to verify, see, all those boxes over here are no longer there, okay? Now, we can change our colors, all that, but that's something we'll go into another video. But basically, that's what we're doing there, okay? Let's see. I believe that's basically everything in this video. I hope that helps out, but basically, just whatever sensor you're going to use for displaying, if you're going to log it on this section right here, that's where you're going to be looking at this section up here. And if you want the ECDU to even look at that sensor, you have to have whatever sensor it is down here as well, okay? Hope that helps. Uh, I'll be making more videos. Stay tuned.